It started out as a typical day for the Warren family living on this quiet street in Wellington, Florida, an equestrian community just north of Miami. That morning, I do remember we were eating breakfast. Um, nice, calm Saturday, I believe it was. Joe Ahrens was 21 years old at the time. He will remember that Saturday for the rest of his life. It was May 26th, 1990. A clown carrying balloons and flowers came to the Aaron's door. Joe's mom, Marlene Aaron's Warren, reached for the flowers and was fatally shot twice in the face. It was uh, one of the worst days of my life. Aaron's heard the gunfire and ran to find his mother in a pool of blood. He saw the clown walk away and disappear into a white car, but had no clue who the killer was, and neither did police. The case would go cold for decades. Then, finally, after 27 years, a break. Advanced DNA testing led authorities to Sheila Keen Warren. Testing has evolved over time, and there were apparently some pieces of evidence that they wanted to re-examine, and they sent it to an FBI lab. And it's unclear which part of that led to the arrest, but something stuck, and that's how they were able to make the arrest. Keen Warren was living in Virginia. She was arrested and charged with first-degree murder for the shooting death of Joe Aaron's mother, Marlene Warren. I could not grieve because there was no closure in the case. Authorities suspected Sheila was having an affair with Marlene's husband, Michael Warren. Michael and Sheila eventually married in 2002. She was living with him at the time of her arrest. The trail that led investigators to Sheila Keen Warren contained many twists. One of them, a deathbed confession from John Moran, a family friend. John Moran passed away, but before he died, he shared a secret with his son, John Moran Jr. My father told me everything that happened before he died. I knew where the car was. I knew who planned it. I knew where the gun was at. John Moran Sr. worked with Michael Warren, who was married to the victim. Warren was questioned by police but never charged in his wife's murder. He was a used car dealer who was later arrested on charges of grand theft, odometer, tampering, and racketeering. Warren's friend, John Moran, told his son before he died that Warren may have had something to do with his wife's death. On his deathbed, he told me that car would get me anything I ever wanted for Mike Warren. Moran Jr. told detectives that Michael Warren tried to bribe him. Investigators followed up on details Moran Jr. gave them, including information about what could have been the killer clown's getaway car. John Moran Jr. said his dad told him where some of the evidence was kept. Police went diving in a Palm Beach canal where Moran Jr. says he and his father helped dump the evidence. However, investigators did not find the clown costume or murder weapon. Without that evidence, police can't make a case for murder against Sheila Keen Warren, according to their lawyer. I do know enough about this case, not from the discovery process, but from my knowledge of the case, that she's innocent. Sheila Keen Warren uh, accused of this case, and it was a cold case uh, for many years, but now they're getting ready to try it. And let's bring back in our think tank to talk about how this case is going to play out. And, and, and from my perspective, um, for prosecutors, it's, it's a relatively strong case, despite the age, Michael Bix. And I know it goes back to 1990, but it was advanced testing. And again, they haven't released all the evidence, but we believe it's advanced testing that's going to make this connection. But we also have some evidence uh, that the defendant may have been buying balloons that day and purchasing a clown costume a couple days beforehand, which would be awfully bad <laughs> luck. Not a great look. Not a great look. We know about the DNA. We know about the car. We know about these, uh, you know, the costume being bought. There certainly is a lot of circumstantial evidence here. And, you know, the age of a case can both help and it can hurt a defendant. Sometimes, you know, for a defendant, if you know, you want to try to go back and uh, find some evidence that might help you. Also, the age of the case is going to hurt because it, it does make it that much more difficult to go back in time and find those things that could possibly help you. On the flip side, also, the age of the case is going to hurt the, the prosecution. We know that it's going to be hard for them to find things that they don't already have to linker to this murder. So all in all, I mean, it is a circumstantial case at the end of the day, and there is a decent shot that she might still walk. She could. Uh, Jennifer Brandt, I... To me, it's going to come down to this is like a, a witness case is going to be really important here because they're going to rely upon witnesses from 1990 to say that this woman uh, bought a clown costume and this woman was buying balloons 
uh, the morning of the murder because we know the clown shows up with, with flowers and a balloon. Right. And as Michael pointed out, I mean, a lot of time has passed and most people can't remember what happened, you know, last week. <laughs> Not to say they can remember clearly who bought a clown costume back in 1990 or balloons or anything of that nature. And where were all these witnesses before? I mean, where were they? Why didn't they come forward then if there was any kind of suspicion? Well, they, they came I mean, forward. I, I, think the, I think the problem is they didn't have enough to... to I, I think she was certainly on the radar from the beginning. But one of the big problems in this case, Jennifer, was is that the clown was described as a man initially. And again, right. eyewitness testimony is so unreliable. But that is direct evidence, ladies and gentlemen. That is direct evidence. And, and so it's circumstantial true. sometimes true, is but better. I, but Vinny, I mean, you know, and a lot of these witnesses, who knows where they even are now? A lot of time has passed. And look at her, son, look at the son. I mean, he, you know, he's grown up. Does he really remember what was going on in detail? I mean, I'm sure he was shocked by all what happened. But I mean, time has passed. It's going to be difficult to recreate the scene and, and get accurate testimony um, at this day. It's, it's difficult to get accurate witness testimony, even cases that happened more recently. But one that happened so many years ago will be difficult. So I think the DNA evidence, um, that's certainly helpful. The car, all these other things will, you know, hopefully uh, strengthen the case. Yeah, it's, it's the son who saw the clown, Casey, and he's the one who described the clown as, as a man because the clown was big and, and, you know, Sheila Keen Warren is not big. She's, she, she's tiny, but you know, maybe there, maybe he was thrown off by the huge clown feet. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't there, but, but to me, that's going to be a real problem here, which is why the evidence that we don't know for sure what this DNA is and, and what the exact connection is, but that's going to be crucial because eyewitness testimony is what it is. Even when it's direct evidence, when someone sees the, the, the killer, um, you're dressed as a clown. That's correct, Vinny, but also the strongest point that the prosecution has, although it's not an element of the crime, would be motive. You have this connection between Michael and um, Ms. King. So if they don't have direct tes testimony, eyewitness testimony, that is, because this uh, potential killer was dressed in a clown suit, they do have motive, and that would be the relationship, the extramarital affair that went on prior to uh, this untimely death. And resulted in a marriage, by the way. Resulted in a marriage. Mm -hmm. All right, when we... And arrested when she was with him as well. So yeah. they were still together. They were still together. Happily married, I, I guess. When